Hello, and maybe even welcome back to um, the third part in the explanation videos for my um, Block C series. So this time I'll be going over the add grid node I made, um, or just add grid system. Um, and basically what it does is it takes the geometry from the clean geometry part and it adds a uh, similar divisions to the um, L-shaped rooms or plus-shaped rooms or T-shaped rooms. Um, and besides that, it also checks for intersections um, between corridors of rooms or doors, as they're normally referred to. So let's dive into it. So the initial thing I do here is um, I remove the bottom groups. So um, earlier on, I basically grouped the geometry uh, with a top group and a bottom group. So all the faces that had a attribute attached to them made in the um, cleaning part were basically extruded and the top faces were given a group and I just delete that group because I don't need the bottom faces. Uh, secondly, I delete the walls because I didn't want to focus on the walls yet. Um, I thought of using them as height reference for later, but as I wasn't going to do the art at least not for these sections. Um, I kept off for that for now, so I just removed it. Um, the first thing I then do is check for connectivity. So um, I use this class attribute to loop over each section separately, which I do in here. So the first thing I do is I fetch geometry and use the new Boolean tool to go over it again and clean it up. So this is more useful with the um, L-shaped rooms. So if I do this, let's see. Yes, it loops over it. Yes. So um, if we look at this geometry here, we can see that this point here has been kind of peculiar. So if we get an edit node and just uh, try to pull up a point, so let's just make sure point selection is on. So if you move this up, you can see it's disconnected. So um, that's an error that slipped uh, in the clean geometry system. So here I thought, let's clean it up again to be sure. Um, so I use a Boolean, uh, which apparently if you just set it to union, it just does exactly that. It just cleans geometry to make sure that any um, loose parts like this are just attached to the name part and it triangulates it. Uh, so again, I do the thing with the outer edges. So I select the outer edges and dissolve. So I really have that clear grid, but something of note, I now have this point, uh, which I'll be using later on. And just a facet to remove that in line. Oh, actually, no, I'm remaking it later on. So um, yeah, just adding some normals here. Now these normals here are quite important. Um, so this is a polyframe node, and what that basically does is it takes a point, it takes the next point, and it makes the normals point along it. Now I think first edge here, um, it takes the past point and makes the point, normals point away from it. So as you can see here, the normals are pointing along the geometry. Now I use this in here. So as you can see, everything turned white except this little uh, black part here. Now this is a script that just checks for concavity. Uh, the way it does that is it looks at the neighbors, um, make an anger attribute, get the normals. It checks for all the normals and if it, um, yeah, it just adds all the normals to the angle attribute. Now in here, the angle attribute gets divided by the amount of neighbors and that attribute gets just fit to a certain place and um, that basically just makes it either zero or one, if I recall correctly. Uh, let's see, points here. This is pretty big, let's make that smaller. So yes, curvature. Um, so concavity here, it says one, which basically means that, yeah, it is in fact one. Um, so here it is a concave and the rest is convex. Um, so yeah, that's what this little script does here. Um, again, I group the points and I use that concavity to determine whether I execute the following. So 
here there's a couple of attribute promote. So this is a detail uh, expression or a detail promotion. So basically what that does um, is it promotes it to a detail and a detail attribute can be accessed from anywhere using a detail expression. Here I summarize the amount of um, concave points again with detail and a sum promotion method. Now this part is used in here. So what happens here is parts. So here I've got a switch which refer, refers to that uh, promote concavity. And basically if there is a concave point, um, then it gets turned to the concave part and otherwise it just passes through the geometry. So in this case, we have a concave point, um, in which case I go in here. So this is a pretty big FOB network, but um, the task in general is kind of simple. So um, it's, it's all about this intersect function here. So what it does is it takes the current point, which in our case is point three. It uh, takes a neighbor from that point and um, so I think in this case, it picked zero, so that would be 0.4. And it then uses that neighbor to um, um, make a normal that points towards this side. So it uses the position of the uh, neighbor point and the current point to make a direction. So this direction points towards this edge here between zero and one. Um, that is then that vector is then normalized as well as um, right yeah um, it's used like it's multiplied by 0 0.1 and added to the position so basically if you add a directional vector to a position you basically move the position along that vector so here I move the position a bit over here um, which is because of the intersect function so this intersect function needs a couple of things um, it needs a ray origin and a ray direction. What it does is it um, takes geometry as an input. So here I use um, this input. Uh, let's see. So convert line, which basically means all line segments are primitives. I use that input and I detect collision. So um, it shoots a ray from this position. And as you can see here, it hit and it made a point, 0.7, but it hit twice. Um, so it also did the same thing from here. Uh, as you can see, it's inside of a for loop. Um, and that's what that promote is for. So here we've got the sum of the concave. Uh, and what that does is it takes the concavity attribute um, and it takes sums up how many points there are and if the point is concave, then it executes the script. So it just does it twice in this case because there's two neighbors and in that case two points it needs to hit. Uh, that new point is in turn given some attributes, so the origin point gets an attribute, this one gets an attribute, uh, new point and origin point, which is then exported to the actually applying of the grid. So if you look here, we still have our uh, grid but suddenly it has uh, these lines applied. So what I do here is I take those points um, and I add them together. So I do that using a simple script. Basically, if new point equals one, you add the origin point. So you make a primitive, a polyline between the new point and the origin point. So it does that. Uh, it then fuses it and using another script, I just delete everything that isn't a new script. Um, in here, I then use a poly split node to project the curves on the geometry. So this is actually a pretty interesting node. Um, what it does is it takes a piece of geometry, in case in this case our L-shaped room, and a curve, and it projects the curve on top of the geometry. So yeah, I found that pretty interesting. I didn't know about this, um, but it came in very useful. So um, yeah. That's the first step here. And then it just transfers the class because um, this whole system uses a universal class. So I think this is geometry piece four. Yes, so class is four. 
and this just remains throughout the whole thing. So another thing it does is it takes those grid pieces. Let's actually turn this back on. Um, so here we have our piece of geometry. I think we're currently looping over this one. So our piece of geometry and a corridor. So first it only keeps the floors. So on this side, we only have the floor. So let's actually turn off all those numbers. And here it only keeps the corridors. Uh, again, you can see here that the connectivity nodes are grayed out. That's because again, I'm using a um, universal class. So here I then loop over the rooms and ray the, um, the corridors on top of them. So here there's the corridor input. Here we have the floor input. And I just use a simple ray node to ray the corridors on top of the rooms. Um, here it basically checks, okay, is there a difference? If there is, keep it, otherwise delete it. And again, um, using this whole intimidating looking um, vault network to basically just add a new point. Um, this adds a new point, I think, yeah, it does it per thing here. So these points here, let's actually turn this on, were added based on that rate geometry, um, are then merged together. So now there's a primitive between them. And there we have it we have our doors. So um, I actually store the height. So in here, um, I store the height as a height attribute. So if you look at the points, I think, yeah. So here we have a height attribute. So to make sure that, because um, this operation needs to be executed while everything is on zero and the corridors are, I think, I think doing them on one, up oh, two. So um, here I just reassign the height to make sure I still have um, some nice height in there and we don't have a two-dimensional mesh. And from there, there we go. Um, what I also do in here, actually, something interesting to look at is I add a lot of attributes. So these are um, attributes that determine the floor the door um, belongs to, as well as the corridor, the door, the room. Um, that's a lot of words there. Um, it has an attribute that determines the room it belongs to and the corridor it belongs to it takes the room type so let's say this I think one this one I think let's see um, yeah I think it was this one and it belongs to a round room so um, it gets an round attribute as well uh, that's a, just adding a lot of information to be used later which was the whole system so um, these ones, these past videos have been kind of short. Um, next up is the instance points system. This one is gonna be a lot bigger as it covers multiple systems in one. So once again, thank you very much for watching and hopefully until the next one.